Hi, it's Wayne here from Adreno. Let's have a look at whether we use monofilament or Dyneema for rigging a gun. And good points on both of them. First, let's have a look and we'll rig up for you a gun with monofilament. And that's monofilament and crimps. First, we get the crimp onto the mono. Sometimes when it's cut dead straight like that, it's awkward to get the crimp on here. It's hard to get in there. So cut it on an angle. You can see it there on an angle. And now you can slip the crimp in much easier. So put the crimp on, go through the shaft, like so. Bring the crimp back down and we're gonna go back through the crimp. Now here's a, a little tip to make things a little bit easier. I get a flame and just put a mushroom on the end here, just on there. Making sure when you use a flame near here, it's nowhere near this, because otherwise you're gonna make this weak. So now once you've got that set, you can pull the crimp up to there and then haul this down like so. In most guns, put the crimp just on or slightly either side of that section there, the beveled section, where it's cut away there, comes up there, either on or just slightly one way or the other, it doesn't matter too much, but definitely not on the notches. You don't want it up here on the notch because uh, when you go to load the gun, it's going to be sitting in the place where you want to put the, the bridle. So here we go, just haul it back like so, there we go. Now, in doing a crimp, in crimping a crimp, we need to leave a section. See how I've got a millimetre sticking outside the crimpers? At least a millimetre. So the millimetre means that you don't get the hard edge of the crimp pulling down onto the mono, which would create a weak spot on the mono. Here we go, down here. Boom. And I do one in the middle. Doesn't really need it. There we go, looks a little bit neater. So we have the crimp and it's bell shaped on both ends and crimped in the center. Okay, that's connected to the shaft. So now we put the shaft back in the gun. Of course the crimp goes on top of the shaft. Rail guns are easy. You just put the shaft into the rail, slide it down, goes in, clips. It's fine. All right. So we see, always do the, the shaft first before we connect up to the, to the gun. Good thing about mono, and this is uh, important to know, is that it is easy to handle in the water. It's springy and it, uh, it doesn't tangle so easy. And this is why it's so popular. So here we go, goes up under there, down, across here. We're gonna go down here. Let's have a look what slide the, uh, Line releases on that side, around the line release, back up to the muzzle bungee. It's always handy to give yourself plenty to play with rather than start fiddling around later. So once again, we uh, clip it so it's easy to fit into a crimp. Got a crimp, same deal. Put it on. Now, I haul it down a fair bit down the line just to get uh, the uh, muzzle bungee put in. And it's important to get a good tension on the muzzle bungee, but not too much. So once again, I put this through the second side of the crimp, a little bit tight. Sometimes it's a bit talk. You know, the, the line sometimes is, says it's 1.8 and there's sections that are 1.9. And <laughs> so it varies a little. Sometimes it's hard to get through. Now I get there, you want plenty, big enough so it's easy to put on and off. Now when you're tightening it, so there's no tension there. It's next to, it's sloppy, right? So idea is you haul it down until, see you've got there, no tension and then Maybe it's only 20 mil, 20, 25 mil. Pull the crimp up, there we go. Let's have a look at it, that's good. Now before I crimp, I always check that the mono is going where it's supposed to go. Fun times it slips off and then you crimp it and you've got to redo the whole thing because you don't quite have enough. So here we go, that's in good position now.
one down the other end and then we go there so, okay this one here i just chop off there we go done pretty simple okay uh, the thing about mono is it will uh, get bends in it you know places where it twists around a rock will become a kink and things like that so sometimes after it's been on the gun for a while there'll be a few kinks in the mono and then the mono is hard to manage i think the important thing on that is to um, change the mono often enough that it doesn't get kinked important thing also is when you're dealing with mono and you're dealing with either big fish or fishing around coral or rocks every time you go out before every day run your hand down the mono and just check if you've got any nicks or anything like that very important the other one is this is something that people don't check here we have it coming through here this is the most where you'll get the most wear on mono through there and people will go on thinking that you know mono should last months and months and they forget to check the important thing is to pull the mono out like so and check the section here very often i get guns in the shop where i've done this and it's halfway worn through and once again you get a big mackerel fish of a lifetime maybe comes through you go boom and you go ping and you lose the spear lose the fish not good picture so here we go before you go spear fishing pull it out just check that it's solid and if it's not if you have any doubts change it simple as hell so let's have a look at dyneema the thing about dyneema it's tougher it's tougher on the rocks mono put around the edge of a sharp shell and pop it could pop just as easy as hell good kingfish or or something like that or a dog tooth tuna dragging you through a reef dyneema is going to be a better option for that so we're going to have a look at how to do that dyneema it's a woven fabric and often you go to put it in here and you've got a big fluffy end there see so sharp pair of scissors and then that there would fluff out very quickly don't put too much temperature on it just enough to because it's the outside melts fast the inside doesn't now that will just go through there so before we put it through there we put a simple knot in there okay and then we put dyneema through so now you've got a, a true here you have a look at this knot here and where that dyneema comes out we put it back through we now tighten this knot down okay now it's just very simply a loop through there now we are going to do a lock knot on it once twice all right there's two there and that goes up through them all right and then it's a matter of massaging the knot down you don't want to change this too much because it's in the right position try and keep it the same form and it becomes the barrel knot okay and the beauty about this knot is that the harder the fish pulls the tighter the the two knots pull against each other and you can knock this back pretty short just fix up that there a little bit there we go all right put the spear back in same deal now I use Dyneema. Why? Because uh, I go for the strength of it, but actually when I'm traveling, and I do a bit of traveling overseas, uh, it's so much easier just to carry a reel of line and you know knots. You don't have to carry crimps and a crimper. You add a crimper into your luggage, it's a bit heavy. Can't take a hand luggage, I've already lost one by that. <laughs> Here we go, same deal. Now, once again, give yourself plenty to work with. 
Okay, so once again, we do that single knot there, like so. We go through there. Now we pull this down. There we go. Now, once again, we're going back through the same hole we came out of. Cool. Now, here we go. We're loose there. And now we're going to pull this down, like so. All right, now we've got a little bit of stretch there. There we are. We've got about as much as we want. If anything, give a little bit more because you're going to pull the knot a little bit out from there. So it's just add a little bit more on there. Now to tie this, rather than tie it under pressure, I then take it off the back here. Now it's easy to tie. Okay, and we just go, got the knot there as we see. Once, twice, and up through the loops. It looks like that. There we go. And we're just going to haul it down a bit. Massage it down. There we go. Once again, we'll just give it a quick snip. Cool. Everything's as we want it. So, Mono or Dyneema, they're both good. They both have their good points. I'm comfortable using both. Mono, I actually get a good grip on Mono. Sometimes this slides a little bit, but really the bottom line is they're both good. Whatever you feel most comfortable with is the best.